this is Adam from EnglishAcon.com and this video is a brief overview of the layout window found in Construct 2. Now let's open Construct 2 and let's get rid of the start page by clicking on the cross next to the start page tab. Uh, let's go to File, let's go to New and let's go to Empty uh, the Empty Project. Now you'll be, uh, you should see the default layout 1 and default event sheet 1 which you'll be given when you create a new project. If you click or if you hold down Control and mouse wheel backwards, you should be able to zoom out. Alternatively, click on View and then zoom, click on Zoom Out and Zoom Out, so that you can see the whole window. Now, this is your layout, and there are some options for your layout found by clicking on Layout to the right and then looking to your Layout property to the left. But also, if you click on New Project, you're given options which can affect how your layout is viewed. So if we quickly look at these first, so new project, and let's go down here. I've discussed um, these text fields in in another video, um, so you're welcome to go and watch that. Now if you scroll down and go to project settings, first layout, default, if you change it to layout 1, you don't have to for the moment, but I just have. Um, this basically tells Construct 2 which is your first layout to start the uh, program with. If you come down to window sizes, there's something you can always look at. Now you can toggle to look at the width and height independently or if you're okay with using a comma um, you can write in the width and height. Now this changes the window size of your viewing window so let's change this to 640 comma by 480 pressing enter. And you may have noticed if you look carefully that this dashed line just changed size. Now I'll just change this number again just to demonstrate and I'll put 800 here and before I press enter if you just look here around this area you'll see that there's a change. Now I'll press enter bang, oops sorry, down here, and you'll see that I've just changed the height of the window size. So you'll notice on your layout that the window size, the viewing window for the user, is given by this dashed layout. Now when you scroll the window, you're actually moving this viewing section around your layout. So if you were to have objects here, for example if I double click, go down to sprite, double click, click here, and then just draw something crazy, like way, if that crazy light can line there, You'll notice that at the moment it's not within the window um, viewing space, but if you were to use the event sheets to scroll this um, viewing space past to the right past this object, it would come into view. And you can use that to create different effects, such as parallax effects, or if you use the layout to plan out a large level and have this window to follow your character, then it will move around. Um, clicking back on new project to look at this, so that's what the window size does. Pixel rounding here um, just simply tells the computer that if you have if you have a position, let's say that's um, don't even know what's there. We go. That's seven four eight point two. It should round it in game, maybe not in the layout, to seven hundred forty eight pixels. It just rounds it off those decimal pixels. Let's click back on the new project. I'm going to turn that off for the moment. Um, I'll demonstrate what a loading layout is in another video and I'll just see if there's anything else I need to mention quickly um, these are just configurations to preview and to set your game as such as the physics engine um, no I'll come across these in a different video and the only thing that you could have is clear background but we don't need that for the moment now this is your layout and if you come here to the right and click on layers you can actually display different layers within your layout so at the moment we have layout 0 and this is transparent no so this is going to show through the other layers if for example layer 1 has transparent yes so this is actually tra transparent layer and anything any objects on layer 0 are displayed now I've discussed layers in a different video and you can look at my YouTube channel to find that video or use the information box um, for this video down below now if I click back on layer click on transparent to no, you'll notice that, that that object disappears and also if I change the colour of this layer then if I just toggle its visibility you can see that it's over it and the layout below is not shown so that's just a simple demonstration of layers so I right click and I'll just delete this oops sorry right click doesn't work on this um, kind of pen okay delete now to add objects into your layer you simply double click or you right click somewhere and click on insert new object and then you can insert any object or any plugin from your insert new object box such as for example um, a tile map let's just 
sector, use recommended settings OK. Here's the tile map and here's the area which that tile map will be placed. Now you'll notice that despite including a tile map in, um, I simply have a bo here, box here and nothing is displayed. I can click on tile map down below and use this to actually color this tile map in for this object type. But you'll find that because, and I think it's because Construct 2 is this, this whole program, not the coding behind it, but the, the layout is using, I think, Visual Basic or something like that to display objects within the, these windows that you don't have any animation or any effects occur within the layout view. You have to actually run the program to see those. Um, that can be quite confusing and lots of people who start using this program get quite confused in that they can't edit in finite detail uh, objects within the layout. You have to use the event sheets and preview those effects um, within the, the preview button. Now you'll notice when I added these objects to this layout that un in the objects button um, objects tab that these objects were uh, appeared within here. This tells you which objects are available within the layout. However, some objects, so for example, if I click on this object and click on global and to change the yes, will be available for this layout despite not actually being in the layout. On top of that, you can create using the event sheet other objects into your layout. So, for example, if I go to event sheet and if I add event, go click on systems, scroll down, go to uh, on start of layout and click on add event, uh, add action, go to system, then go down to create object and choose an object, sprite map, click on done. Then at the start of layout, then this object gets created on this layer at this position. And that can bring in other objects from elsewhere into your game within uh, this layout, rather than simply having to bring any, everything in. Now you can bring in other objects by going to file and right clicking and then importing files to this, or you can go to object types, right clicking and inserting new objects here to insert them into your layout and then use them. You can also drag objects from this bar into your layout um, or from the objects bar into your layout as well. Now you're given several different options from your layout. So for example, if I right click, I can see those options. I can see the Z order. So if I click on this sprite, right click and go to Z order, I can move up and down the Z order. I discussed the Z order in another video. Um, also I can right click and click on edit event sheet and this takes me to the tab of the event sheet which is, which is associated with my layout 1. To see what event sheet is associated with layout 1, if I simply click on layout 1 here and look at the left I can see the event sheet on the event sheet drop down menu to see what is associated with it. Now if I right click again within my layout I can insert new object, I can look at the alignment um, of these different elements. So for example, if I click on this sprite here, right click, go to alignment, go to window, and I can line it to the left so I can have it perfectly aligned to the left, or I can move it around, go to alignment, and I can align it in the cen center horizontal, center vertical, or along the edges or spaces. I tend to align things with the event sheet, so on the start of the layout, I choose where their position is so that it doesn't matter where they are in the layout, I can actually reposition them somewhere else. Um, but you may find that it's easier to actually create your game and position your, your things within the layout or within almost like a map editor um, and then use that to, to create your game. Now if I click on this again, sprite click on it, um, edit animations only associated with the sprite and I've discussed this object sprite in another video so I'm not going to click on that, but if I click on a clone object type and paste summer You'll notice that I have identical objects, but if you look at their name and their unique identification, their UID, they're at the actually they're different. However, if I were to click on this, then right click, go to copy, and click somewhere else, right click and go to paste, um, I actually have an object, the same sprite, but with a different unique identification. Now the name, if it's each object has a unique name. Um, so this has a unique name for this. However, you can copy and paste objects and they will share the same name and they are the same object. So if I, for example, double click on this and now change the image of this, you'll notice that all the copies have had their image changed and the image is changed here. However, the clone, which actually is an independent and different object, has remained the same. 
that's the difference between copying and cloning. So if you wanted to create lots of different objects, but you want them to be independent of one another, you need to right click and clone these object types. But if you just want the same object type and you want it to be identical each and everywhere, every place you, um, it is, you simply right click, copy and paste. Now in the event sheet, because to create events for these objects, you need to be able to identify them. If I go to this and I add action, you'll notice that I only have these two objects. I do not have all of the copies of the sprite, I just have the sprite itself. So cloning can make it easier to identify different objects and easier to apply different actions to them. Uh, however, you can use the unique identification um, uh, ID number to apply it to a particular sprite uh, um, ID of the sprite, if that makes sense. Now going back to the event sheet, clicking on your object, right clicking again, um, you can see there's some other options such as delete, um, copy and paste which we've covered. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is basically the uh, layout. You'll notice now if I click on the layout and come here to the left, I can use the layout properties to rename the layout. So let's rename this to renamed layout, it's nice and easy. I can change the event sheet. Um, I can choose which one if I want to associate an event sheet with this. I can change the active layer that I'm working on. Um, so if I go to layers and let's include another layer and then go back to project and click on the layout again, then come over here, I can change the active layer to whatever layer um, I want to be working on. So if I click on layer one and then if I double click and include, let's say a button this time, into here, this is automatically placed on layer one. Whereas if I go back to event sheet and change the active layer to layer zero, double click and let's add another button to this site, you'll see that the automatic default layer it's placed on is the active layer that I'm working on. So just be aware of that when you're including new objects into your game that they can change layer. You can always check to see which layer things are on by just toggling the visibility of them per layer. So going back to project, going back to your layout, come over here to the left, you can see I can change um, unbounded scrolling to um, from no to yes. If I look down at the bottom it tells me that unbounding scro unbounded scrolling allows scrolling past the layout edges. Now what does that mean? If you look into the layout you see there's a black line around here. Now this is the edge of your layout and scrolling is when you move the camera or that's the impression this this box here this window when that moves around that's scrolling that around it's where the, your player is viewing and if you allow it to scroll past the bounded uh, sorry the layout edges i.e. you select yes in this option it means the camera can move past this and you can see um, the background behind it um, so for the majority of the games you probably won't need this now the other options are layout size so I can change the width or height either by clicking on these independently or clicking on this and keeping a comma between the two numbers and I can change the width so for example let's change it to 3000 and a height of 3000 and you'll notice that um, the size of my layout if I just zoom out has now changed and it's very large and this can be good for large games where you want the player to explore and you want the, the window to follow them around and interact with different things. Now around my layout you'll notice that there's these corners and these corners tell me where the margins are. So for example I can change the margins and I can make them, um, if I click on that let's make these quite small, let's just put 100 width but keep the height and you can see now I've brought these corners in. Now these margins normally people if they're using a layout will put redundant sprites um, into the margins that they're not using and they'll just introduce them into the game when they need to be. Um, I tend to destroy the, the objects via the event sheet i.e. go to um, system, where is it? Sorry, go to the object and go to destroy object and I do that at the start of that I then create the object as I see fit. Uh, but some people like to have them within the margin. Now you have some actions, and actions are something I'll come to uh, later, sorry not actions, behaviours. So for example if I click on this sprite here, drag it in, go to behaviours, click on behaviours, click on this plus to add a behaviour. Now you've got some behaviours which um, use the margin, so for example we've got wrap which uses the edges of the layout, but we've got bound layout and destroy outside layout. Um, 
they they use the layout edges and the margins to do this. Also, um, you can only move certain things up to the margins. It's worth experimenting with that to see what what, what size you have. I normally have mine at around 500 by 500. I should perhaps point out as well that the margins um, have no effect when you're previewing your game. It's just um, it's just for uh, the layout view. Um, okay, so if I right click to see if there's any other options, no, nope, you can click on help here and you're taken to the construct to manual can you help, or if you look here to the left, um, you can click on help. Now you can view your project properties from the layout properties by simply clicking on project properties and you're taken to the project properties. Alternatively, you can come over here to the right and click on new project and by simply clicking on that you get taken to the object properties here on the left. Now let's click back on renamed layout and look at the last option which is effects. Now if I click on this text effects I have the ability to add effects to my layout. So for example I'm given a whole list of WebGL only supported effects which allow me to change different things. So for example if I go to if I just type in the search box at the top pixel to get the pixelated effect, double click on that that automatically adds it. Now this uh, this adds this effect to your whole layout. So if you wanted to make a pixelated um, game, um, you can actually do so if you want to pixelate everything and not just one or two objects. You can you can do that quite easily. Um, you'll notice as well. So if I select these and if I move them to layer zero, it doesn't matter what layer they're on. They're pixelated nonetheless. So let's go back to your layout and let's look at the pixel size and let's change this to 4, press enter and you'll see they're not quite as bad. If I zoom in however you'll notice that it gets um, the resolution increases. So the zoom or almost like in a way the distance you're away from your layout affects the pixelated size um, and the scale. There are other things you can combine different effects so I could have a blur vertical as well and so you can see that these are blurred in the vertical um, and not just horizontal with the intensity. Let's change that to 50 so it's not quite as bad. Let's change that to 200. Wow, look how vertically blurred that is. Um, so that's ba the basics of layouts. You include objects into here to then interact with them via the event sheet. You can include objects, so for example I just include a sprite um, and I'll do a little squiggle. Um, I can then associate different things with the sprite which I can use to interact with. Um, it's worth having, I, I tend to use lots of different layouts rather than trying to bungle my whole game onto one layout, I tend to have one layout for my introduction, one for my start menu, one for my game, one for my high score screen and so on and so forth. In my other videos I will cover that and the best way to learn about layouts and the best way to learn about event sheets as well is through use and experience. So please watch my other videos where I'll be creating games and you'll get to use um, both the event layouts and the event sheets and see what they're about there. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, visit my site and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.